Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we're actually gonna focus on the Millipede once again. We're gonna kind of button it up. We're gonna see if we can cap this Matsushita monitor. Uh, people say Matsushita, I call it something else because uh, you know, it's really troublesome. But for me, I got really lucky. Mine worked right out of the box. It has matching serial numbers. So we're gonna go ahead and save this monitor. It works really good right now. It's working perfectly fine. Um, it is a little bit blurry on the blurry side because the focus knob, for whatever reason, doesn't wanna focus. Um, I mean, it does focus, just doesn't get sharp enough, I should say. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and cap this monitor in this episode, and that way the caps are all new, and we're gonna see if we can make it like razor sharp. I'm sure it's gonna look beautiful when we're done. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so we're at the back of the machine. I already have everything out. Um, this is the monitor right here, and it's gonna have, the way you're gonna take it out is actually through the front. You can't take it out through the back. So what you have to do here is you have to take these bolts off. You can either take these two off, which is kind of easier to do. However, when you put it down, this is gonna be jutting down. We really don't want that. So there's another one right here. You can see it underneath. You just take that out and uh, basically make that loose and then take out the rest from the front. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out right here. And then uh, what we're gonna do is uh, just turn around to the front and I'll show you the rest of it. Okay guys, so I have the monitor uh, unplugged. I just unplugged it right here. And I'm just gonna kind of take a grounding strap and uh, put it on here. That's the chassis. And now I'm just gonna go ahead, put one hand in my pocket and go underneath the cup. We should hear a popping sound here. Let's go right underneath here. Listen, here we go. You heard that? That little snap was the discharge. So you always wanna do that even when it's off. You gotta kinda worry about that. After that, you can handle it or you can just take it off. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing one side in and then lifting out, there we go. So you'll see it's a little tricky sometimes, especially on this one where you have to just take this part, see how dirty my hands are? You have to take this part right here. Um, so this is it, you know, you gotta just squeeze it in. So I was actually pushing my screwdriver against that like that to kinda close it so it opens up. So this is really, really filthy. Most likely I'm gonna wash it, <laughs> but um, for now, I'm just gonna pop it out. Uh, but I definitely have to wash my hands now because I'm all full of this crap, so. Okay guys, so we're back. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I did put some locks in here that are new and I also replaced the um, coin thing that was broken on the right. The guy had like a, <laughs> I don't even know what it was. It was like a red plexiglass cut out uh, it was really horrible actually. Um, and then there was no spring, so I had spare parts. I put it all in and now it's all nice and new. So let me go ahead and just take this underneath. Take this out. Um, when you do that, you're gonna wanna close this because you don't wanna mess up the coin door there or the control panel. So we're taking that out. And Here's the glass. The glass is actually designed to go down first and then come out this way and then you lift up. So I'll put this on the side. I'll put it somewhere where it won't get bumped. It's tempered glass. This too I can take out. I believe that I can take out all the way. Okay, let me just put it on the side here. All right, so let me see how these come out. Uh, looks like they're stuck on there pretty good. They might be actually wedged into the wood, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the washer. Looks like there's a lock washer and a regular washer. And I'm just gonna take them out here. Put them all in there. All right, let's see if this opens it here. Yep, first try. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna keep it inside here with all my other parts. All right. So this needs to come out. Okay, so check this out. With this on here, right, you can't get the monitor out because this part hits right here. But Atari has designed it <laughs> 
that, once I get this off, that they actually cut a notch here. That's for putting the monitor in and taking it out. So look at this, look how the clearance here comes right out right there. So I guess they knew about it, that it didn't fit. So <laughs> let's go ahead and take the whole thing out. Again, you wanna disconnect all the wires. You don't want anything hanging. Okay, so we're back. We have it here on the bench. Uh, let me just adjust the lighting slightly here so you can see it a little better. There you go. So um, I'm going to discharge it again. You know, I already, like I said, I discharged it a second time and I saw another uh, zap there. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same. And I'm going to go on this side because this is where the clean side of the chassis is. <laughs> Over here is super dirty. Uh, so I wanted to make good contact. So let's see. Do you see that, guys? This is the third time I discharged it. So uh, I did exactly this the second time. Um, and you know, you just gotta be super careful cause you will get zapped. <laughs> so this has been sitting for about an hour actually. Um, and then I decided to discharge it again. So now that I'm working on it, um, that's what it is. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna wash it yet. Typically I go outside and wash it off with a garden hose and then throw some distilled water on it. But I don't have, um, right now it's winter outside, it's freezing. Um, it's below freezing so you know the hose isn't connected and I can't go outside to do it so I could stick it like in a bathtub if I wanted to but what I may do is just remove the PCB um, maybe dust it off or maybe wipe this down and get all this stuff off here because it's really kind of nasty <laughs> so that's probably what I'll do I'll just take some simple green and a paper towel um, and just go through this and clean it up as I take it apart because um, you know, I can't go outside, but normally I'd wash it. I have no problem doing that. If you guys haven't seen that already, you guys are probably familiar with that, but I do do that. So uh, click on the link in the description or right up here um, and it'll take you right to the washing the arcade monitor with water video. It's completely safe as long as you do, as you do not turn it on and it um, dries up, you know, 100% uh, before you do it. So you gotta let it sit for a while or just, um, you know, just be really patient with it. So. Um, so what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to remove the board. I wanted to give it a wash, but I may not. It's not really that dirty. The only thing that's dirty really is all this, but not really the board. Because usually when I cap it, I like to see everything brand new and looking great. Man, this thing is filthy. Maybe I'll, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wipe it down a little bit just to get the residual stuff off with a paper towel and some simple green. So let me grab that stuff. And I have, uh, I'm just going to spray it. You could spray it right on there, but since I'm not able to rinse it, I'm just going to kind of spray on the paper towel itself just to make sure. And you can see, <laughs> wow, what a difference. Look at that. Way better. You can see if I do it on this side here. So look at that. Gross. So yeah, this thing has just been a dust magnet for years. I doubt it was ever clean since it's life at all. I'm gonna clean these wires here. Wow, these wires are like black. All right, so I'm just gonna do the flyback with you guys right here. Okay, so I'm gonna get in here now. Um, I cleaned it as eh, just kind of a cursory clean. It wasn't really that serious. Um, but I'm gonna start taking all this apart. There's a few wires here, like this goes to there. Um, but then you have the grounds right here. I'm not really sure. I think I have to take this one out because it's separate. So I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to go ahead. I think, does that lift off? I'm not really sure. Yeah, it doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. So I won't lose it. And then I believe to take it out, it's probably this one right here. That looks right. Yeah, that looks like it's gonna come out. So I'm not sure if that whole plastic piece comes off or if the whole thing is supposed to come off, but we'll find out. This comes out. Oh, okay, it does slide out. Okay, good. So that slides out of there. 
but there's wires connected all up in here so I'm gonna unravel them here and it looks like the degaussing is on the side here so I'm gonna pull it out that doesn't matter which way it goes in and then this wire here does that come out all the hole yeah it does so I don't have to disconnect that the only other thing connected would be the anode cup and of course the yoke so the yoke wires are right here let me go around and see <clears throat> if I can just take this out right here okay looks like the yellow is facing the tube because it is not is it keyed mm, I don't think it's keyed so we'll have to put that in correctly and then ground right here on the neck goes right there I got to remember that and then the neck board of course as I pass in front of the camera try to take it out here I'm trying to pull out straight ever so slightly I'm not wiggling it too much and then let's see if it slides out should let you take everything out all right cool we're free so what I'm going to do is um, I know the colors and everything are working fine typically at this point what I would do is connect it to a rejuvenator just to test it um, you could actually plug things into a rejuvenator and not rejuvenate it you can just test it so uh, in this case I do not need to do that because I know that they're fine colors are good we're just going to sharpen it up a little bit so if I was doing a total rebuild I would probably stick it in there just to see however this isn't a standard um, tube by the way it's not CR23 and it's not CR31 <laughs> it's something else um, I can't recall offhand what it is uh, but um, it requires a universal um, you know for my thing I have the BNK 467 uh, it requires a universal adapter which you have to actually put each one on there uh, individually with the pin out and then uh, you can do it but we don't need to do that the tube is great we don't have to do anything with that so um, at this point I'm gonna kind of give this a little cleaning here we're gonna flip it this way and you know I can get underneath and stuff so I'll do that real quick then I'll have the chassis here and we'll get ready to uh, clean that up and then cap it okay so we're set up here um, I have a small brush actually this is actually a paintbrush it's a touch-up brush it's flexible on the handle you get them at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever um, so it's really soft that's the main thing you can see like the bristles are a different color here it's because it's super soft um, this is perfect for just uh, going in and you know dusting it off and getting in little components and not wiping it down which is what I'm doing I just want to keep it dry so I can work on it right away I mean you can wet it um, but I'm not going to because I want to work on this right away so. so I'm just getting in the nooks and crannies getting all that stuff out you know dust that's all it is really um, you do want to discharge it um, you can see it works really well on that um, getting all that crap out that dust like I said I did discharge it but I'm going to do it again for the capacitor so I'll show you how to do that okay so the um, B plus cap is actually I'm guessing would be this one right here see that silver one right there it's humongous um, you could probably see a better angle looking at it this way but it's pretty big so um, I'm going to see if I can discharge it there from the bottom so this is it here I'm going to flip it over see what we got uh, let me just see where it is that one would be this one right here I could see the two points so I'm going to go ahead and grab my huge screwdriver that I just had it may not do anything but there really is no chassis kind of to ground it too but I'm going to put it there just in case and it's these two right here so that and that so I usually put them together like I'm doing there so if you look here kind of just doing this 
where I put the two points together on the screwdriver. Let me see if I can, there we go. So these two points, positive and negative, I usually just short them together. Sometimes you'll hear a pop, sometimes it'll be really loud depending how much juice it has. But I do have a rubber insulated uh, screwdriver so it's safe to do that. But if not, you wanna connect this to ground and then the other one, the positive one is the one you wanna discharge. So I'm not sure which is which, so you just touch each one like that and it should be okay. Because it is grounded, you know, with this right there, so. All right, so it looks like it's fine. So it's totally dead. So I have these these on here which grab, but I'm just gonna touch them together. And then we'll just quickly test these two. And I'm gonna touch the metal on the edge because you wanna make sure the contact from the fuse to the metal is, is fine too. Yeah, so that's totally fine. All right, <clears throat> just in case, why not, right? All right, so this is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is, um. I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna get my cap kit, I'm gonna lay it out here, and then we're gonna go ahead and see if we can start capping this thing. Okay, so we're back. So I actually um, rearranged everything and put everything in order over here with the kit. Um, this is from Arcade Parts and Repair. I really recommend this kit. They have, uh, you know, he uses Nichicom quality caps and they're all rated um, equal to or higher and, you know, they're great to go. Um, the other thing I got, just in case, um, you know, is uh, resistors. I know on this particular chassis, the Matsushita, there's uh, some issues where it has, um, I guess, power issues where it starts burning stuff up. So um, I suggest that you guys pick this up. Um, it is the, uh, let's see, it's a 47K one half watt resistor and uh, his part number is R1002. And it's for the Geo7 R908 and it's also for the Matsushita R811. So. R811, you'll hear a lot. If you Google that, you'll see that um, people have issues. Um, a buddy of mine actually had issues. Um, he took it over to Buffett's. Uh, they were kind of trying to figure it out because um, Buffett doesn't really work on them. But he said, hey, let me uh, give you some advice anyway. And it turned out um, my buddy was like, hey, why don't we just change resistor 811? I read about it, changed it, monitor fired right up and it fixed his millipede. So uh, yeah, but again, you know, he doesn't work on those. So don't even ask him. <laughs> If it does not work on Matsushita's, uh, which is why I'm doing this uh, cap kit, um, you know, tutorial because I haven't seen any online at all. Uh, but anyway, so this is the uh, R8, the famous R811 that everybody talks about. I have it as spare parts just in case. Mine is fine. I checked it out. The resistor is um, not burnt up. Uh, it's totally fine. And this resistor is actually located, if you look on the board, uh, right over here. Uh, let me get my pointer. Uh, there's two fuses, and it's actually next to the uh, bottom fuse that's closer to the edge of the board and it's this one right here it's the one right next to the one on the edge and it's labeled you know it's, it has it on there so um, you can find it it's labeled on this side and also on the other side so it's uh, R811 is right there so if this is toasted on yours um, or you know not working properly where it's uh, acting weird replace that resistor it may solve your problem doesn't matter which way you put it in uh, there is no polarity on resistors, so, um, you know, but that's it right there. I do have the spare parts, just in case. All right, so let me go ahead. We'll put those to the side. I just wanted to kind of mention those. I'm actually going to have this inside here. Um, I did get the B+. I wasn't going to change it out, but you know what? I am going to change it out because I want to show you guys um, how to check B+, on this monitor. Um, I really should have done that before where I fired it up and then measured it. Um, again, it was working fine, so I'm sure it was fine. But um, anyway, it's supposed to be, I think, uh, plus 127. I'm not really sure. Um, I'll tell you exactly what it is later. Um, Arcade Parts and Repair has it listed on their site. And also, um, let me actually bust out the manual here real quick. <clears throat> so I have this awesome manual um, that I got. I got this separately. I didn't get it with uh, buying it, but I bought this. Uh, it's in pretty nice condition. It's, it looks pretty mint to me. This is the manual for Atari. It has a little bit on the monitor in here. Um, however, um, you're going to want to have this right here, which is the uh, manual that came with it. For me, it's a Matsushita 19-inch color raster display. Um, I also got some schematics for it as well, in case I need to work on it in the future. And, of course, a supplemented millipede um, addendum that they have here which shows by the way if i had had this when i was testing it before 
it shows that remember i had that weird looking uh test thing and i was like what is that blurring there that's completely normal i double checked it in main but here it is verified right there so okay so let me put these away i'm going to leave this one out here so this one here if i were to open it right in the table of contents um and this thing is it's amazing it's like in mint condition here <laughs> but it says right here and i'll i don't know if you can read it but it says uh let's see right there it says video b plus adjustment go to 28 so i'm going to go to 28 uh let's see so page 21 is down there so 28 and it has a whole section on that video b plus adjustment and it basically gives the steps on what to do so basically i'm going to summarize it um <clears throat> i'm going to show you figure four here it tells you to refer to figure four uh let me just double check what that is okay so this is figure four right here so there's a board on the back of this which i'm going to show you in a minute but this is the brightness knob right there, and it's the first one right there. It's R344. So what you're going to do is you're going to, according to the instructions here, um, you're going to turn it up all the way. You're going to set your multimeter and go on the test point 91, I believe it is. Let me look here. Make PCB. It's going to be plus 123. That's where I really, I was trying to get before, but it's a plus 123 volts. It's R344, which is on the back. I'll show you that in a second and you basically just adjust it. Um, and it's gonna be D91, which is the test point, which is right there. So everything's all explained in here. It tells you exactly what to do. It even shows you over here where the B plus adjustment knob is, which is R812, which is right there, which is right next to the fuse, right next to that other resistor that we were just talking about. So again, I'll go through it when we do it, but um, this is a knob right here that you have to do to adjust the B plus. And then on this PCB right here, it's like a supplemental one that they have on the back on this thing, which is right there. Um, it's gonna be this knob right here, which is the brightness, and I'm just gonna adjust it with my tool here, and kind of pop it in there. You turn it up all the way, you turn it on, you see what it's measured at, you adjust it with this right here. Once that's all adjusted, you turn it back to normal, to normal settings for brightness, and you're good to go. All right, so, um, Let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna probably change this out first. So let's do this right here. And I'm gonna make sure this matches. I mean, I labeled it um, B plus for the Matsushita, but I did order it from Arcade Parts and Repair. Um, look at the difference in size too. <laughs> when I take this out, I'm gonna put them side by side, but yeah, it's tiny compared to this other one. So let me go ahead and desolder that. I have my desoldering station here. And I do have affiliate links in the um, description if you guys want to know like what equipment I'm using. Um, but anyway, let's see here. And it's going to be this one right here. And this one right here. Alright, let's see. Try lifting this out. I'm kind of wiggling it a little bit. I can see it's loose here. So just by wiggling it, this is loose. That's that one. This one's still kind of on there and that one too. So I got to heat those up again. That one's loose and this one is loose as well. All right, looks like they're all good to go at this point. So it should come right out. That's the beauty of this thing. It's pretty amazing gonna pop it out and this is it here and sometimes on, on here it'll usually tell you like what's what so it says negative AC dummy lug um, 200 volts 800 so let's see if they match here so look at the size difference that's crazy so this is Nichicon it's rated to 105 degrees centigrade and then this says uh, 820 UF and 200 volts and then this says 800 UF at 200 volts. And typically you don't change it, but Peter said it's fine. He said this is the one that you need if you want to do a replacement. This thing is really, really old and I'm going to replace it. I think this is more robust. Um, let's see here. So it says negative AC dummy lug. So it's going to usually tell you what's what, but this only has two. And I forgot what they call this, but it actually snaps into place. They're kind of curved a little bit. And when you're, Trying to put it on the board, it'll actually snap right in there. 
as opposed to these. So you really don't need these. This thing is pretty heavy too. Um, all right, let me just look at the traces on the back to see. But according to this, oh, it says it on here. All right, so there's negative right there. There's a negative symbol. Let's see if you guys can see this. I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. But on, uh, can you see that? Yeah, so this one here, if I'm gonna point to it here, that says negative on there. This says A, B, and C. So according to the top here, it says B is 200 volts. So that's where it is, and then negative is negative. So B is what the 200 volts is gonna be. So B would be the one directly opposite that, so. Okay, so when I put the new one in, I'm gonna to wanna to put it from here to here. So because it's not wide enough, usually they're not, they're a little thinner here. I'm gonna to have to find a creative solution. So I'm probably gonna see, see how there's like a hole in the center? That's probably where I'm gonna put the other end here. So negative would be there and then negative is marked on there. So negative is gonna go fine in that hole, but I'm gonna to have to put it on the other one, basically on the other side. So if you look at this here, so this is negative because it has the stripe here and that's positive. So that negative is gonna go in there and positive is gonna go in this hole here. And we're gonna to have to make a bridge um, with uh, an old leg or something so I can uh, put it in there. So you can see right there, I, I have both of them there. Can you see that? And I'm just gonna poke this one through if I can get it through. I'm gonna put a big blob on there. All right, so that should do it for that. And then I almost forgot, I gotta turn on my fan. So you'll hear a little hum here. It's gonna blow all my stuff away from me. And for the other one, there's nothing really to go to. So I'm gonna have to do what I just said I was gonna do with putting this out. I'm actually gonna stick this in Pretty much up to there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it with some pliers and I'm just gonna stick it in there. And just like that. And I'm just gonna quickly tack it on there. Just so it's in there. Hopefully it'll stay. There we go, that looks good. But I need to pull it up more, so I forgot I'm bending it. So, get that up. All right, so there's that point, and then it's probably steaming hot right now. I'm just gonna bend it. right there and I'm gonna put that point on there we should be good to go trying to fill the whole hole there heating up on the other side now. I just want to be able to push it down. Let's try it again. All right, and then that will just reflow real quick. I'll let that cool. So that's it, I think that's the best uh, route there. It's nice and thick gauge. Um, I'm gonna put a little more on here. And then we should be good to go. Let that get some more here. And that's it, so it looks perfect. So there may be another piece sticking up on the other end. 
I'm gonna check it out right over here. Um, yeah, I have it sticking out right. You can't really see it, but I'm gonna get some cutters right in there. I'm gonna slide them in and cut them. See if I can get in there. Yeah, there we go, I can see it. Perfect. So I got in there, I'm just gonna grab the piece. Let it fall down. So this is it right here. You know, I just cut it off basically. So it's not sticking up and I'm happy with that. Cool, it's not touching anything, we're good to go. All right, so that's how you change the B plus gap on that. <laughs> nice and neat, it's nice and cool. So you have this side which is negative and then the positive side is right next to it, which I bridged over that hole and we're good to go. It's cool. It's really funny, this um, buddy and I were talking about this, this board. It almost seems like a generic board that they kind of just, you see how empty it is and stuff? Like they just took this breadboard here and they just soldered what they needed to it. Um, and that was it, you know, like some of them, it almost has a symbol for a capacitor, but they have a wire going out. So it looks like they just took this and kind of adapted it. See, there's like missing chips here that would have gone in there. So it's kind of generic and they just stuck everything in there and made a chassis that worked. So cool. All right. So let's start capping this. We'll start with, uh, we just did that one there. We're going to start with the bigger ones. Um, so it says here, and by the way, there's one of them. It says 3.3 UF at 50 volts bipolar. You got to make sure a bipolar can go in either way. There's no positive or negative. This is how it looks. There's no positive or negative markings on it. And then it says here 3.3 UF at 50. And this one actually says 3.3 at 250 volts. That's fine. As long as the UF or the microfarads is correct, uh, you're good to go. So 3.3 UF is what you're looking for. And then as long as it's 50 or greater, it says 50 on the sheet, but it says 250 here. 250 is a little more robust. It'll last longer and stuff like that, supposedly. So uh, it's totally good. It's rated as uh, 250 and, and anything below it. It's up to 250 that it's rated to, and you're good to go because it falls within that spec. So, uh, all right. So let's go ahead and put in, I like to put in the big ones first, just to get them out of the way on my kit here. So it says here there's 100 UF at 250. So 100 here at 250 and on my sheet it's listed as uh, 100 at 250 is at C455. So I'm gonna mark it with a dot. Uh, looks like it might be this one. Let me just double check. Could be this one here basically the biggest one that's on there so 805 is that one yeah you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get my glasses that's 33 at 160 this one is 100 at 250 so that's not it um, I'm gonna put that one back because I see the one I need, it's right here. So this is 33 at 250, right? This one here says 33 at 160. So as long as it's rated better than what it is there, you're good to go. This is actually smaller, ironically, because of the technology than this one here. But we'll go ahead and take that out. It's cool, you don't even need like a, a pan of ice. <laughs> this kind of holds itself up, so it's... So far, so good. I'm liking this chassis already. Let's see, 405, let's go ahead and take this out. This one here. All right, now it's out. Just gonna take it out. Wonder if there's glue on it. It's a little tough to take out. A lot of times I like to, as it's coming out, Give it a little extra something because sometimes there's extra like uh, solder on the end of it that prevents it from coming out the hole. Right, I think that's fine. There we go. Now it's coming out. Just a little stubborn. And it looks like it's marked 
I'm gonna make sure they're in the right way. Yeah, I don't see any markings anywhere of what's negative and positive, so I'm just gonna take note on what's what. I'm guessing this little arc here looks like that's negative according to how this is put in here. So I gotta make note of that. This arc, see that right there? There's another one actually um, right here. You see that one really clear. That's negative and the other one's positive, so. This is uh, C805, it looks like that was. So 33 at 160. 33 at 250. 33 UF at 250. Okay, C805. So let's put this other one back in. We can toss this one. 33 at 250. And then of course, positive is the longer one is positive and the shorter is negative, but also it's, see negative is that side. So negative goes towards the arc as we just established. I'll fix this one now. All right. Now we'll just take the cutters. And we'll uh, snip them. That one's a little thick. I gotta thin that one out here. Just do it. Okay. All right, let's uh, get to the one next to it. Don't really know what that is, but we'll look now. So 4.7 at 250. There's two of them. So down here, 4.7 at 250, what did I say that was? C559, yep, that's right here. C559, I just put a dot next to it. I never cross them out, because sometimes you gotta go back and then you can't read what you crossed out in marker, so. Okay, so we're back here and I have my test pattern generator right here. Mine is a little modded where I put an LED on it. If you wanna see that um, video you know, on how to do that, it's pretty simple, it's like under five bucks. Uh, just click on the link above and you'll see it. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna turn that off for now. That's just so I won't forget, You know, sometimes I'll leave it on after I shut everything off and this thing stays on without the LED and then it ends up killing the battery. So that just tells me, hey, it's still on. Um, anyway, so I have it plugged into here. I'm not really sure on the pinout on this. Uh, what's cool about this TPG is that you can actually set the dip switch settings. Uh, you play around with it to, you know, because sometimes the sync is off or you have the pin out a little different, so I can mess with that. Uh, so it says, anyway, before I do anything, that you have to set the B+, plus because I did change the B+, plus, um, you know, uh, cap over here. So I definitely have to adjust that. And how to do it, actually, the knob is right here. It's basically there. I'm going to use this to turn it and stuff. I'm actually gonna turn it, uh, I'm gonna leave it alone actually, I'm gonna leave it alone. 
<laughs> in the middle because I'm not sure if I'm turning it up. Sometimes if you turn it all the way down, you're actually turning it all the way up and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to leave it right in the middle there. And what you have to do is you have to turn up the brightness on this right over here. So I'm going to zoom in on that for you guys so you can see. So there's a board right here. I'll actually leave it right on like that. And the brightness is right here. It says bright right here on the side. It's actually covered by the wire, but you can see it there. And then you have to turn this all the way up. So right now it's set for, it looks like a little bit to the left. So I'm going to actually just turn it all the way up. And what you're doing when you do that, I guess, is you're giving it more power so that you can really get a true reading of what it is. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on these transistors. This one, um, a friend told me that he tried it when this was broken, when he was, when his was on and he ended up seeing smoke and stuff. So he ended up just turning the monitor right off. Turned out that he had to replace this resistor that I told you about right over here. Um, I think it's R811 and then it fixed the problem. It was fine. He was able to adjust everything. So, uh, yeah, so I'm turning that all the way up. That's what it says to do in the manual. So locate the fuse, which is right here. And then it, that's a test point. You see that right there? See, it's, uh, I believe it's 91. So you're going to put the positive on that and then the negative would be on the chassis itself. So I'm going to get a multimeter, put the negative here and then the positive on that pin right there. This is how you adjust it right down there. There's a, uh, this is it right here. And my multimeter has hooks already. You can use alligator clips if you want. That's what I suggest. Um, I don't suggest sitting there holding it. Uh, but my multimeter has these clips that I bought on uh, Amazon where they kind of have this thing where, you know, you just literally just, you can see that you kind of take it out and then it hooks in and it holds it in place. But typically if you want, use alligator clips and then take those alligator clips and attach it to your multimeter. That way it's safe. You have this all set and you won't have to do anything. So right now I'm going to hook this on here. So that's on the test point. There we go. I'm actually going to hook it on here. So I have uh, that set to test point 91, which is hooked on it. And then I actually took where the grounding screw was right there. And you see that? And I just hooked right onto that right on there. So yeah, pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, then you want to set your multimeter to DC voltage. And I believe this is 123 volts. So I'm using an isolation transformer. I actually have this extension cord here to one of my games. In this case, it's Outrun, because it's the closest one. And uh, I don't have a dedicated test bench just yet. I should, because I work on monitors all the time. <laughs> but uh, we're not doing that right now. So let me just get this plugged in. Here goes nothing. All right. I always do like a little grimace every time. So far, no smoke. I see 124.4. Nothing's going up in smoke. That's good. All right, let's go ahead and adjust that out. So let me just make sure you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. Yep. All right, so I'm going to take my thing. You can do it with your hand too. You can reach it, but I'm just doing this way because it's a little easier to reach from, with all this equipment in the way. And let's see, if I turn it left... Yeah, it's going down. So 123 is what I wanted at. A little bit up. One twenty three point two. That's pretty good. Now they say you should adjust the voltage when it's warmed up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that at one twenty three right on the nose. And we're just going to wait a little bit uh, to see. So I'll come back in, I don't know, five or ten minutes with it running. And then we'll uh, see where we're at. Okay, it's a few minutes later. It's actually drifting between 123.0 and 123.1. So that's fine. I'm going to leave it where it is. Uh, looks good to me. I'm not going to mess with it. And now, um, since that's all set, I'm actually going to set the brightness back to normal. So I had it all the way up. I'm just going to take this. Put it back right there. That's where I saw it at. It's not going to be exact, but we'll adjust it out. Anytime you cap something, you want to adjust it out a little bit. So there it is. So, all right. So let's go ahead and turn this around. We already have the TPG plugged in, and we'll see if we can get an image on there. 
All right, so I have the monitor here. I am actually going to turn it on again. So I just turned it around, plug it in. I disconnected my uh, multimeter. And let's see now, let's see if I can shut this light off. All right, you can see a little bit. You can see that it's on, it's doing its thing. Uh, but let's see if I turn on the test pattern generator, what kind of image we get, if any. All right, so that's a little scrambled. And the reason it's like that is because I don't have the ground set correctly. So let me try, or the sink, I should say. Still acting weird. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip some dip switches right on here. So this is the test pattern generator you see, and I'm just gonna flip the switches right there and we'll see what happens. All right, that looks like it did something. So what I'm gonna do is let me just uh, try messing with the horizontal pot on the back. It's very possible I touched it. All right, so I think I figured it out. It is that one that's in the center. So let me see if I can go in with my tool. It's in just a weird spot here. Let's see if it gets any better. Yep, it's getting a little better here. All right, so that's a sync issue. So now that I have a signal there, I might have to do vertical hold, horizontal hold, but it's definitely a sync issue. So I'm gonna mess with the dip switches now. See if I can get anything. Oh, there we go. So that was the one all the way on the right. It looks like horizontal two needed to be disabled. That's the negative sync. And now it looks like vertical hold. So let me see if I can do that on the back. Vertical hold definitely got hit when I was capping it, I'm sure. That's the wrong way. There we go. Bam. Beautiful picture. So it works. It's a little tiny bit out of focus only because my camera is just acting stupid. <laughs> but let me go ahead and hit that focus button and see if I can get it uh, dialed in a little bit. So that's blurry. You can see right there. That's blurry. And that to me looks right, right on. Yep, cool. Now let me just cycle through the tests here. So you can see a little bit of convergence over here. Not convergence, but the, uh, actually I can see, you see that right there? It's a little bent. I wonder if that's because of my dip switch settings too. I'm sure it'll be fine on the real game. See, it's like a little kind of bent right there and there. Uh, I think that might be my TPG, but I could be wrong. So I'm not worried about it. Everything to me looks great. This tube is amazing actually. And my convergence, let me just double check that. Cause I did, and my convergence is dead on. I'm looking at it. So I did mess with this ring right here by mistake. I had touched it. So let me see what that does. I think I'm okay. I don't think I really did anything much. So you see how that's like a little crooked here? Can you see that? So right here on the blue, if you look right there, it goes down and then kind of is jagged. That's a sync issue. So what I'm gonna do, when I say sync issue, it's just I don't have it connected correctly. But if I flick the little switch to fix it on the TPG, and change the pin out, bam, goes away. So after is where you wanna be at. So that looks really good to me. Everything does not, I'm still pointed at the same area of the screen, um, but it does, doesn't have any more issues. So I don't have to worry about it. it. Looks really good to me. Okay, and these lines here are normal. You won't see that when you go into the uh, game itself. All right, so now we're gonna stick this back in. I discharged it already, you always wanna do that. Um, because you never know, you touch something wrong, you don't want to get shocked. You don't have to when you're putting this in because I'm nowhere near where I'm supposed to be, but it helps. 
better safe than sorry. So I'm putting that in there. I think it's pretty hilarious that um, Atari actually cut a notch in there for people to do this. <laughs> so it'll fit. But hey, that's what they do. So now these are up here, are built in. There we go. Lifted it up, fits in. Awesome. All right. Good enough for me. I didn't realize this is still dirty. I still have to do the uh, cosmetics episode where I redo the control panel and I also clean everything else up. So before I finish, what I'm gonna do, uh, before I turn it around, I'm just gonna give that a quick cleaning with some Blast Plus. I think the glass is already clean, so I don't have to clean that, that uh, you know, the bezel. This, add a little bit of dirt. Looks way better, looks brand new to me. <laughs> All right, so that looks good. And then let me grab the glass, which is right here. Now it's 100%. So the way you do it, I almost did it wrong. You gotta put it in here first. Such a weird design. You put it in the slot first, you tilt it forward. It's like a V shape in there, and then you slide it up. Kind of falls in that lip so it doesn't fall down and i'm of course going to glass plus this real fast the inside's clean the outside might have gotten touched excellent all right let me close this up oh still got my tools in here put those on the side close it up and And I'm also gonna um, plug it in on the back. Right now it's not plugged in. So I figured I'd do this part first. All right, so there it is, looks great. Let me turn it around and we can go ahead and finish the back. So this I believe goes right in there. Then you got the washer, the lock washer, and the nut. And this one, you only need to tighten the nut. It actually locks in on the left, so you won't have to hold it. Let's see if I can get that on there. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's good enough. It's not going anywhere. All right, so let's plug in the let's plug in the power first and then we'll plug in this ground wire right here really tough to get on and the only thing I unscrewed from the chassis before was this one right here and I had put that back so we're good all right so that looks good and then now we have to of course attach the signal is right there snaps in we're good and everything else looks perfect so let me turn this back around we'll go to the front and we'll make sure it's working all right so we have it plugged in let's see how it goes And there it is nice so right now you see free play activated and it will have sounds yep let me turn this off here real quick get some uh, gameplay going on the monitor looks dialed in I don't think I have to do anything with it, it looks really clear to me <laughs> way better than it was very cool 
What I may do is I may put up the brightness a tad, just the hair back here. Two hours later. So there's vertical. So I need it to be vertical size. I need it to be a little smaller. And I think that's normal because this knob in the back can get jostled a little bit when you're capping it. So I'm just bringing it in a little bit so you can see the word save. And I think that's good. I just saw in the mirror. Okay, that looks great. So by the way, guys, <laughs> if you're curious what I was doing here, check it out. I'm going to put some light. I have a mirror here. I'll turn on the big light actually here. I have a mirror that actually clips on so you can move it around, articulate. I kind of built it out of a lamp where you just take the clip here and then put the other end here. Works really good. Just helped me out right now. I just clamped it here and then set it the way I wanted it to. So let me go ahead and turn this off and we'll kind of turn a little bit and that should be good. So now you can see everything on the screen. All right, so I wanna bring it up a tiny bit. So I'm gonna bring up the brightness a little bit. I feel it's still a little too low. Uh, it's very possible it was just set wrong. I'm gonna bring it up a lot at first and then we'll examine how that looks. Yeah, let me keep going. I wonder if it's doing anything. Let me get my tool here just to get in there. All right. See how that, that looks. Oh, I'm making it darker. <laughs> Go figure, right? All right, so let me turn it to the left. So let me put my mirror back up. I think... Um, it's ironic when I really should have set the B plus. I might have to test the B plus again because I think I was turning it the wrong way. All right, so that's on there pretty good. I'm gonna do this to see and I need my little flashlight to get in there. This one right here. All right, let's try. Oh, much better. Look at that. Little too much. Right there. How's that look? That looks really good. Now let's work with the focus here. Focus knob is right there. I'm looking in the mirror there. That's blurry. That's not blurry. Right there is good. All right, now that looks great. I think I have to turn it up a tiny, tiny bit. Just a hair. Try again. All right, I think that, that'll do it right there. That looks excellent. Really, really sharp. All right, so now we're officially done. <laughs> so let's see, I'm gonna play a quick game again. Because it's so much fun. It's so much fun to play this game. Here we go. Oh, now I can really see. Uh, 
really gotta get in here. Get all those away, and the computer knows it. Oh, that was close. So happy right now. I have no idea. All right, super stoked. So hopefully you guys um, learned something today. I learned something today. It's the first time I worked on a Matsuchita. Um, wasn't as painful as I thought it'd be, um, but it was working. So that really, you know, that's like 50% of the battle right there. Um, but yeah, so I'm still beta testing this thing. Um, as you can see, you know, if you missed the video, you can actually hold both down like this. Go back to the menu. And then um, it lets you do, you know, the, you could choose which menu it is. Let's see if I do it again. All right, so I can go to Millipede, Centipede, Warlords. Let's play a game of Warlords. Oh, did I choose the wrong one? Let's try it again. I think I chose the wrong game here. Warlords. There we go. All right, let's start. So I'm the guy on the left. You could be anybody you want. I just chose to be that guy. You could choose either this guy or that guy. And I chose to to have the different one there. So I just killed him. And now Trying to kill the guy diagonally. He's usually the, the biggest threat to me right now. Uh, he's the hardest to hit. vulnerable right now. Ah, one more hit. Come on. Oh, I killed myself. <laughs> Still pretty cool. So yeah, this is the uh, not out yet kit by High Score Saves. Uh, again, I have a video if you want to click up here and check it out. But it really is fun to play. There's a lot of selections you can do. Okay, guys, so it's working beautifully. It's awesome. It has the attract mode, which I love. It does it. Um, by the way, I have a correction to that. Um, it does it one out of four times um, if you select one slash four, not volume one out of four. I was mistaken on that. I was wondering why it wasn't doing anything to the volume. So what happens is every Every four um, screens, it'll actually just do the track mode. Some will have it with the sound, that's once, and then the other three will not have sound at all. Or you could turn it off completely, or you can just have it on two out of four times, three out of four times, or four out of four. That means every single track mode. So I'm setting mine to one out of four for now. I think that's enough. Like right now, it doesn't have sound, so it's going to do it three more times silent and then one with. So that's what that was about for that thing. If you want to see, the video on that, again, just click on the link, you know, either below or on top here, the suggested videos, you'll see it there, but it was a really cool video. First time ever beta release. It's still in beta right now. I just upgraded it today, actually. It's pretty rock solid at this point. Um, and I've, you know, played it basically daily to um, ensure that, you know, everything's cool with it. And I did find a bug or two, so I let them know. So that's about it. Um, 
Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter and also on Instagram as well. I always post stuff up on there. You've probably already seen, you know, that I'm working on this Matsushita monitor there. So, um, you know, this is no surprise that this is going to be the next video and people are kind of excited because no one's really seen this type of video with this cap kit. I haven't seen one, in my opinion, anywhere. In my experience, I should say. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.